um, they will be taking you through um, just an introduction, to some of the bioinformatics tools um, you can use to analyze your data. So we're recording these sessions. Um, I hope we've got fast file files um, on the Google Drive. Um, I think there are like five examples, something like yeah. four or five examples. Yeah. So you can download those ones, um, you know, if you want to follow along um, and use these commands on your computer to get your data out. So the aims are to learn how to run and install the Windows version of Guppy, um, to learn how to base call um, the raw data, um, the Oxford um, uh, Nanopore data, which is a fast file format, and convert those to fast Q files. Um, learn how to combine fast Q files, uh, concatenation, um, and then check your um, sequencing results to QC them using fast cues. So um, before you start, um, most uh, bioinformatics software uh, operates on, line, on Linux or um, Mac OS, which is Unix, is based on Linux. Um, so you need to install the Windows Linux subsystem for you to be able to run uh, most of the software. Um, and then as far as like computing power, uh, we're talking about this yesterday. Um, usually like if you want a laptop that have like at least 16 gigs, a few of these will run, some of these programs run on computers with eight gigs of RAM, but yeah, you want, you know, as good RAM as you can get. So 16 and over. This in like large files and some of the other work you may be doing like if you want to, to construct a phylogenetic tree take days. Um, you may have to leave your computer running. So power, access to power is also an important thing to think about. Um, I know outside is you've got like solar. Do you have solar at the, at the campus as well? So it will be good yeah. to, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so um, investing in a UPS and an inverter just you know, in case Cisco does what Cisco does. Um, also, um, a lot of them will uh, need you to be connected to the cloud. Um, so you also may need to invest in a good internet connection um, for any um, Um, so with Dabi, what Dabi will do is, is to base call. So yes, we need to switch off base call if this is a use of actually. And let's switch off base call. You can switch it on when you're doing your research and base calls as you're running it. But that just depends on how powerful the computer is and what afterwards. Um, it will demultiplex so that it will take all the leads and assign them to very specific barcodes. Um, it, you can also trim um, your data with Dabi removing um, more than adding the barcodes in this case. And um, then you can use fast just for the body spectral. Um, then um, it will take you through your TV profiler, um, which is basically with all the leads. So you've gotten lots of short reads, right? So you're going to align them to the reference sequence and then um, use that to then assemble a reference gene so that it says a sequence of everything that you want, right? Um, and then genome polishing a uh, long string um, analysis, which is phylogenetic analysis annotation of the um, um, of the sequence that you get and uh, the lineage of the you know, like, you know, which is very important. Um, so, um, fast five files are, the, are used by uh, the mineral instrument to store the raw sequence. And so these are, it's basically electrical signals that come through the pore when uh, a, a nucleotide passes through the pore, right? Um, 
then the GAPI software converts the that raw those raw data readings, those electrical signals into your ATs, Gs, and Cs, which is what you see in um, when you convert to the past few from it. So yeah, um, so as I said, past five um, files are the more data that they want to um, um, generate. Um, they're very large files, um, so you can transfer. Um, yeah, but it's binary data ones and zeros can be opened by a text editor. And as we said, it contains the electrical signals that come out of the core when the nucleotide passes through the core. So some tips before we start, because you'll be using your um, Windows terminal. Um, so we usually don't use Microsoft Word because Microsoft Word, whatever you type into Word is formatted a different way, right? So all the commands that you're going to see here, you can copy and put them in Notepad. Don't save them in Windows because Windows will convert them <laughs> to a different format. Um, so if you've got Notepad or Xcode for Mac OS, um, it would be good to install those so that you can just copy and paste commands that you may need to use um, later on. Um, so yeah, like I, like, like I was just saying, so it's good to copy and paste these because you need to refer back to whatever command you need to use later. Um, also set your working directory to your home. Um, so like your data files, um, your raw data files, like store them in the home directory, it must be easier for you to work with that um, when you're then telling, um, instructing the computer where to find what data, what input data, and where to store the output data, and it analyzes um, your sequences. Yeah. So, um, any command that you run, you have to provide the path. So this is the, the, the address or the folder or the location. Um, yeah. um, so we're specifying the path um, when you're going from one level to another. So for example, from for users for them, uh, uh, here is uh, so there are no mini using back using forward slashes. If you're using a Mac OS for the, the next and back slashes, if you're using Windows, um, you can also use the parentheses um, to direct the computer to the specific location you're trying to uh, access uh, the folder. So if you put all of this, for example, in it's in the example below. Um, we use the parentheses so that the computer goes straight to that folder, right? So let's install Guppy. Um, so basically, when using Guppy, once you get it installed, um, um, you use code or code syntax, right, in your terminal tell the computer what to do once you have the program installed. Um, so the syntax includes arguments or parameters, which are basically just instructions on how the computer is going to execute your command. So what's required in Guppy is first of all to, you have to know where Guppy is stored, where the um, execution file is in your computer. Right, and then you have to know um, where your input data 
is, right? And your save path, and then the configuration. So the configuration is basically like what kits you are using, right? So um, this time use the 96 kits, right? So you have to include that so it knows what sort of like kids. Um, when you download it, it comes to the list and all of the different configuration files yeah and so you can tell it which one you need and on that um document that i've also uploaded it specifies which one is good for which um post and which uh, and which type of base you want as well so fast base or high accuracy or super high accuracy so flags in a way to um specify options um you can see this by running the help tool um and um, options to so also use to the program for additional arguments. So, for example, if you want to filter out files with less than 4,000 reads, because your past few files will come with a certain number of reads, if you only want files with a certain, you know, with a certain number of reads in them and to exclude the other ones, you can use um, um, options. Um, so, let's do that. So, how to deal with errors? <laughs> This happened when this happened when we we um rest stones um governments and so errors happen all the time. Um and what you need to do is that the computer will give you you know an error code or like a, an explanation of like what the error is. So you can either you can Google those error codes. Um also you can put the error codes. There's also like a community um online, an OMT community where you can Put up the error code and ask people i got this error code what does this mean right and then people will respond to you or if someone has already um seen that error code before um there'll be an explanation there for you to see um what's happened what what um caused the problem so um minimum requirements for running guppy so like we like we said this one runs with a minimum of uh, eight gigs of ram um so guppy has three functions the base polar the barcoding and the alignments um of your sequences can all be done from guppy um so the test data today um used this kit the sqk rbk004 and the flow cell that was used was uh, on the flow cells. Um, it, it will state like which variant of the flow cell that you bought, whether it's the R41, the 10, the R10s, um, it will state on the flow cell itself. So you also know the state in here. All right. So that's an example, um, basically, of how to write the the code. So this is basically you put in the address of where your execution file is, right? And then this will be the fast file. So remember we said it takes fast file, which is the raw data, and then into translate to fast queue, which is the actual ATs, Gs, and Cs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then this is where you're going to save. So where do you want to save your um, your file after it's done um, working, right? Um, and then this again, like we said, is um, the first the public variation. So remember, we said we're using uh, R nine four one flow cell, right? Um, this is just saying how many base pairs um, and the base, the configuration. So yeah. That stating the configuration by which you get all that information about how the So there is like an example command. So like I said. Um, program files is in. Let me try and bring up the window. So this is the Windows command prompt, and you can see that I've got the address for the Guppy base caller executable program, um, the input 
file um, pathway here, so in my C drive, uh, and this is my fast Q file, uh, fast five folder. Then the output or the saving pathway is a fast Q uh, folder, and then this is the configuration file. So if I press enter, this will start to base call, and you can see that as it goes along, it will add more and more stars. So if you have a look in the folder, so this is the fast five folder, you can see I've got two fast Q files here. And in my fast Q file uh, folder, you can see it's creating um, these fast Q files and it also provides a summary text and a log. So that's just information about how the sequencing, uh, how the base calling has happened. So you can see now that it's finished. So it's 100 percent It's finished. Um, any of the files that it found in there that were called dot fast five. So you can see um, here it will tell you all the information that you need to know. Um, so now what we need to do is concatenate those files that we have base uh, we have base called into one single file that so that further down in the process um, we can actually use other files to see that. So what we need to do is concatenate those fast queue files into one single file. So I'm using a Windows computer. So what I'm going to put is type, which is the commands to combine those files together. Um, asterisk fast queue. So that's saying any folders, any files with the ending fast queue in this file, uh, in this folder, um, are going to be put into this final file called, and I'm going to call it concat underscore file dot fast queue. And for Mac and Linux, it's the same principle, but the only difference is that the command is cat rather than type. So I'm going to do that now. So this is the folder with the fast queues in. So you can see we've got some here. So what I'm going to do is move into this folder here. So in my, let me move that over. In my Windows oops, command window, I'm going to make the command CD, which is change directory. And then this is the file pathway to this folder. So you can see that now that's moved. Um, and so this screen is now looking in this folder. So now I can type type dot fast q. So asterisk dot fast q. So that is saying I want you to put all of the fast q files you find together, and I'm going to call it cat file dot fast q. Except I can't spell. There we go. So what you should see when I press enter is that we will get another file called cat underscore file um, dot fast Q that will appear in this folder here. So let's do that. There we go. So you can see that that's done already. So it's very quick. And also, if you have a look here, you should be able to see that our concatenated file is roughly the same size as the two files combined. So, um, I'm hoping quite a lot of you have managed to get your um, your uh, guppy working and you managed to do the fast base calling on your samples. It's still doing? No, just paused. It's paused? Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, but at least it's working. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so um, with the file that you get from there, we also have example files for you to download, class key ones, which I've already done. Um, we are going to um, look at uh, QC our leads, because after you get your results, then you want to QC your results, to see how good your experiment have gone um, and your, your, how good your sequence data is. 
So um, FASTQ just, um, just stands for FASTA, which is the format that your sequences come out, scored FASTA format, and Q um, is for quality scores, right? So each sequence has um, is read in four lines, the header, the sequence code, um, the name fields, um, the sign and the sequence quality. So I'll just show that for you in this. So the header is in red. So if you can see this red box here, this is the header, right? This is the sequence code. So this will contain the name. Um, this is the sequence code, guys. Um, and this is the the quality the, the code for the quality. So wait, so, so we it has to assign or it assigns a score based on how confident it is that that is definitely an A or that is definitely a T. And so that's what those kind of codes in the yellow green box are. So the more confident it is, the higher the quality score for that specific read will be. So yeah, so fast QC aims to assess the uh, to assess the quality control checks on raw sequence data um coming from high frequency my friends right um it requires require java um so you need to install java on your on your laptops if you haven't already um you need uh a machine that has at least eight gigabytes ram and it can run on linux mac os and this um and windows so this is the website where you can go to to download um all of those versions of the, of the app. So it's a graphical user interface. So after you download it, you just click to run the batch file and then this screen will come up. Um, and then you just hit open. Um, and then you it'll bring up, you know, the way it brings up the, the window that then shows you what files you have, and then you pick up the appropriate file to open. And then you can run it. So, So this is the basic output that Fast QC will provide you. You can see that it says here sang and slash Illumina. So all of this information is kind of put against um, what you should expect for sang or Illumina. So Nanopore is obviously going to be slightly different, but we'll go through and explain that. So you can see in terms of basic statistics, that's the name of our file. Um, you can see the total number of sequences that we've got is 8,000. The total number that were uh, flagged as poor quality is zero. And the length of the DNA or the length of the reads is somewhere between 120 and 23,000. The GC content is 62%. So this is TB. So it's um, going to be much higher than, um, say, your regular gram negatives. So this is the quality score across all bases. So again, this is aimed um, at Illumina and Sanger. So generally for Illumina, the quality score is set to around um, 30 here. So it expects it to all be within this region. With Nanopore, so we set our cutoff at eight. Um, and so the majority of ours are somewhere between 18, just under 20. So that is perfectly normal for nanopore and this is just why we have to try and aim for a greater depth than illumina to try and counteract the fact that the quality scores are generally a bit lower so this is the distribution of quality scores across all sequences and you can see that the average quality score is around 18.
this is the GC content across each of our positions. So again, and you can see um, C and G is blue and black. And so we've got a, high, a higher percentage of GCs than we have ATs. And again, this isn't unusual because this is um, tuberculosis. So this is why it's um, it's confused because usually they're more similar. And again, this is just saying the GC count per read in theory should be distributed like this and ours looks slightly different um, because it's TB. So the end content, um, this is when the sequencing device can't work out whether it's an A, T, G or C, but it looks like it's base called every single um, base because it's got 0% N, so that's really good. Our sequence length distribution, again, it's going to be confused because with Illumina, it should be somewhere between um, sort of 75 and 300, um, or 600. But obviously with Nanopore, we're actually expecting to get really, really long reads. So you can see here again, this is a fairly typical kind of um, shape for um, native DNA. If we had done PCR, and so we'd done a PCR um, of a certain product, say 4,000, we would get more of a bell-shaped curve around the 4,000 mark or whatever size that you had been PCRing. So this is the number of reads that appear to have been duplicated. So again, this is more aimed at Illumina. Um, duplication doesn't really occur so much with nanopore sequencing, unless, of course, there are multiple versions of the reads. Uh, there are no overrepresented sequences. And then again, this is based on Illumina, the adapters. Um, so in theory, with nanopore, this should all be done here. <laughs> 